Hello, Greenlight The Day family. I hope all is well. Uh, I'm so glad to be with you today. I kind of wanted to catch you up on something. I remember last week I talked about the blue book and the talking dog and my cup of coffee, uh, my free cup of coffee, which I think was in vlog number 33. Wow. You know, once something happens like that, once you experience synchronicity or serendipity, you become more and more aware of it. Like um, I was on YouTube looking or listening to Bruce Springsteen's interpretation of Dream Baby Dream. And then I was in Barnes and Nobles a couple days later. And what came over the loudspeaker? The song Dream Baby Dream, song by Bruce Springsteen. Well, okay. So uh, Monday, I had to go through the jury selection process. I got there at 9 a.m. and did not leave till 5 p.m. And they told me at 4.45 p.m. that, no, we don't want you, <laughs> which is okay. I mean, they pay me like $17, I guess, worth my time. Um, but something happened while I was there. You know, while I was sitting there waiting through this whole process, the last part of it where they put you into the into the courtroom and then they ask you questions about your beliefs and who you are and all that kind of stuff. Um, this gentleman sat beside me while the judge and the lawyers went into a back room to decide, you know, who they wanted. Um, and the th first thing that comes out of his mouth, I don't even know his name, he said, don't waste your dreams. And I kind of looked at him and I said, what? He says, don't waste your dreams. Don't be like me. I had so many dreams when I was younger. And now that I'm older, I can't do them. Don't waste your dreams. Dream it. Do the work. Do the work. It is so worth it. Don't waste your dreams. My wife, she had dreams. She quit her job. She did things that people said that, you know, she was crazy. And she did them. And now 10 years later, she has her own business. She lived her dream. And he works for his wife. And he said, do the work for your dreams. Take action. Don't don't sit on your dreams. Don't let them pass you by. And I was like, okay. I didn't know this guy. I never met him. He was an older gentleman. I really appreciate what he said. And I was thinking about it because there's some projects that, uh, no, there's a dream that I want to live. And um, I haven't really been, been doing what's necessary for the dream. I call it a project. It's not a project. It's a dream. And so... Of course, talking about serendipity and synchronicity. About two days later, I'm in the library. I love the library. I love books. That is an addiction for me. I come across this book called The Four Doors by Richard Paul Evans. It says he's a best-selling author. I've never heard of him, and I haven't had time to really look him up. Um, and of course, the first page I, page I turn to, what is the talk about? Dreams. It's the third door. The book is about the four doors to leading a meaningful life. And the third door is how to magnify your life. And how do you magnify your life? He says, we cannot live what we cannot dream. Our life is our dream. They should not be separate. And you know, that's how we thought about things when we were kids, right? People always ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. It was all a dream, but nothing was impossible. Whatever your heart felt, that's what your dream was. And then somewhere along the line, someone said, oh, you can't be an artist. You can't make a living. Oh, you don't look like an actress to me. Or I don't think you have the skills for that. Right. People began separating you from your dream, but your life is your dream. You are your dream. And so he talks about four ways that we can magnify our life, that our life becomes a dream. And um, I really appreciate this chapter because you know how people talk about vision boards and I have nothing against vision boards because I know they allow you to focus on your dream. But no one tells you about the work that you have to do to make your dream your life. It's as, as if that dream is a vision far off. No, that dream is your life right here, right now. And so he talks about that. And he talks about four things, you know, that he feels that you should do. 
the first thing you should do is ask the what if question. What if I was an actress? What if I was an architect? What if I opened my own business? Because when you start thinking about the what ifs, they become real. This is real time. This is not some dream you have in a land far, far away. This is the real time. And you start asking yourself, what if? You start imagining in your mind the steps. Because you know if you want to be an architect, you're going to have to go back to school. You're going to have to network with other architects. You start thinking about those things, right? So they become real to you. And then something else has to happen. And there's this quote by Helen Keller, and it says, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Security does not exist in nature, nor do the children of men as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than exposure. So you get the real world. You know what it's going to take for this dream. Then you got to start taking the risk. Or as this example, Wayne Gretzky, who is a famous um, hockey player, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yes, you're going to fail. Yes, you're going to miss some shots. But you got to take them to know it, right, how you're going to do. So you have to get it into the real world situation. You have to take risks. What are you willing to risk so that your life is your dream? Then the third step is you got to take the seat. You've got to get in the driver's seat. You have got to be in the position to have your life as your dream. You know, for me, that meant going back to school. For some people, that may mean um, networking with people, or maybe it may mean living in a different area, meeting other people who can connect you with other people reading books, but you are the one who has to take that seat. You are the one who has to be the builder, the driver. No one else can do that for you. Okay. And then the fourth step is work. You have to work it. You have to be willing to put the work in. And I like what he says about work. You know, I think work gets such a bad rap because... <laughs> Of the situations that we are in our country, in our world right now. But work for him means focus on success. And I think Oprah Winfrey said that success is when opportunity meets hard work or vice versa, when hard work meets opportunity. And he basically says the same thing, but he adds an A and a B. The A part of work is consistent effort. If you have a book that's like 400 pages and you read 10 pages a week, you will have that book read, right, by the end of the year. You may not have done some grand thing, you may not have gotten overwhelmed with what you were doing, but you applied consistent effort to get it done. And then the second thing, or the part B, is passion. Passion helps you focus. Passion keeps your objective clear. It keeps that vitality, that freshness of your dream. So the four steps you know, that he talked about um, in, in living your life as a dream, asking the what if question, taking risk, getting in the driver's seat or flying seat, whatever seat, um, and then the work, which consists of consistency and passion. I'm going to be reading this again, <laughs> um, and I'm going to stop separating my dream from my life because it's right here and it's right now. I hope you have a great day, a great hour, a great minute, a great moment. Thank you for joining me.